you know, <clears throat> this is a sad event. This is our last date night together. But the good news is, tomorrow I found somebody who's going to give me a haircut. It's been a couple of months since I had a haircut. I've never gone a couple of months in recent memory. But um, there's lots of things as we start getting back out there now. I know um, by now. Lots of places are opening up so we can get out and about and, you know, maybe get within four feet of each other. We'll see what how that kind of shakes out. You know, the pandemic has been a really unusual experience, obviously, for everyone. Nobody, none of us have ever lived through something like this, but we can tell everybody that we were there when we got paid not to work and the economy took a beating and um, enough of that, right? It's time to get out. All right, what I'm making today is a little something I call Thanksgiving in May. Now, in a previous date night, I alluded to the fact that with Sportsman Channel, we have a program called Hunt, Fish, Feed, where we feed homeless military, military families, homeless people in general, and we've been doing it for a long time, using a renewable, high-protein, uh, food sources like like salmon out of Lake Michigan and out of the Pacific Ocean. Um, we've had wild turkey Thanksgiving in May in Chicago. Thanks to the National Wild Turkey Federation that was able to donate a whole bunch of wild turkey breast. And you know how wild turkey can be a little on the dry side if you not if you don't pay attention. Well, we got really lucky on this one and we had nice, beautiful, moist, wild turkey breast for six to seven hundred people but this is not wild turkey tonight tonight is a domestic turkey now you may not remember this but this coming thanksgiving while they've got turkeys you know you buy fifty dollars worth of groceries they'll throw in a turkey or you get a turkey for five or ten bucks that's when i always buy extra turkey and i'm glad i did because even though the stores have started to open up, the grocery stores have started to open up, I still go a lot less than I used to now. I mean, I would go to the grocery store whenever I needed something. Um, I do a lot of farmer's markets. I grow whatever I can. But I'm maybe once a week, once every 10 or 12 days. But fortunately, I still had a turkey from last Thanksgiving. So we're also going to have Thanksgiving in May. Um, not a traditional turkey uh, dinner and, and what I did with the turkey, the turkey's already been cooked, but hell, let me tell you what I did with it. First thing I did, I put it into a heavy duty bag and filled it with high mountain gourmet or game bird and poultry brine. It's the best stuff in the universe. Whether you're cooking a turkey, a wild turkey, um, chicken, quail, pheasant, it really does make a big difference. It adds flavor and moisture. So after I brined it for 24 hours, and, and if you're worried about, I don't have room for brine in my refrigerator, I put it in my Grizzly cooler. I cinched up the bag, put ice on top, and there's still plenty, plenty of ice 24 hours later. I then took it out, drained it in a foil pan, put it into my Camp Chef Woodwind, 325 degrees, I got it up to about 170 degrees just because I wasn't paying attention. Normally I'm about a 165 guy with the turkey. And here's the magic part, and you'll find out about this in a few minutes. Um, once your turkey is cooked, get it to 165, 175, or 170 degrees. I don't care how you cook it. You can fry it, grill it, don't care. Put it into the smallest cooler it'll fit into. And I put it in breast side down. If you've got airspace between the turkey and the lid, then put some foil and some clean towels in there for insulation. The whole idea is to keep it insulated and to keep it moist and it will steam in its own juices. So in that way, you can take your turkey and I want you to put it in this cooler for two hours. And I know what you're thinking. If I put it in a cooler for two hours, there's no way that thing's gonna be hot when I get to turkey time. That's just not the case, especially if you have a super cooler like a grizzly cooler, it'll stay hot in there for a long time. I went to Thanksgiving dinner a few years ago. We went to somebody else's Thanksgiving dinner. I took a couple of these cheap turkeys. I brined them. I cooked them in, a, in a, just a regular oven, put them into a regular cooler, not even a grizzly cooler. 
Close the lid, left it there for five hours till we came back from the other house, open it up, screaming hot, um, steam coming out, hot to the touch, not just warm to the touch. So when you're making Thanksgiving this coming up this November, think about that. Get your turkey done ahead of time. And if you need a reminder, go to the sportingchef.com website. I'm talking entirely too much here. I'll get to that turkey in a minute. My side dishes. Um, I've got some bacon going over here. And I'm going to do kind of a green bean thing. You know the green bean mushroom soup thing? I can't get myself to do that. I'm, not, I'm the anti-mushroom soup guy anyway. So um, I found some canned green beans. Now, again, much like the, uh, the uh, evaporated milk that I had in one of the earlier date nights, I don't know where these things came from. As a matter of fact, there are two different kinds of green beans. My guess is this is something my wife bought when I wasn't around. I've got uh, the regular, no salt added, cut green beans and the French style of green beans. These are imported probably. Got a little bacon in there, a little carrot, and I'm just going to get this. Obviously, I'm not going to need to cook these green beans very long, but what I do have to go on top of them, I've got some smoked quail breasts. Um, I had a job where I had too many smoked quail breasts, so rather than throwing them away, I thought it would be best to take them home, and, and I'm glad I did. So, all right, over here, I've got the carrots and the bacon, and I'll get the green beans going here. The other thing I'm going to make, you, it's a cauliflower puree. Now, cauliflower is kind of a big deal. Cauliflower might be taking over kale as the annoying vegetable of the year, um, but we eat a lot of cauliflower. Um, and I've got to start eating more cauliflower because being home for a couple of months, I'm fat and I want to be less fat so that when you see me back on the Sporting Chef show again, I'll be less fat. It's good to have a goal, right? All right. So. Um, I'm going to make a cauliflower puree. That's just going to go right into here in the boiling water. Um, I've also, I'm going to put a little jalapeno in there. I had some fresh thyme from the garden. And I want this cauliflower to be soft, soft, soft. I'm going to put a little, a little salt in there. All right, got that started. Got that started. Let me tidy up. Give me three seconds. Okay, so I moved the cauliflower indoors because I should have started it earlier so we don't have to sit around and watch cauliflower doing its thing. Over here I've got the bacon and the carrots, green beans, regular green beans, and the French style green beans. How to make canned green beans better? Always better with bacon. I'm going to warm up these quail. So these quail, these are quail breasts, um, and they were brined and smoked. Got a little seasoning on it. Again, I'm glad I saved them. I've actually got a few more. I'll just warm those up there and turn that into something that kind of looks like a casserole. Let me put a lid on that. Just to warm it up a little bit. Okay, so maybe it doesn't fit quite right. You know how that works. Okay, why have I not made a drink yet? It's date night, right? Easy one. Now this, um, this comes from a friend of mine, Jeff, who has created the um, El Jefe, he calls this. And he makes the El Jefe with Tito's, but I'm making mine with drop pine vodka. And as I've mentioned before, the drop tine guys are cool. They're, they're very tied into our people, what we do. Drop tine vodka. Um, I still don't have any regular club soda, but I have some grapefruit club soda. So I want you to pretend that's regular club soda. I wouldn't normally use diet cranberry, but um, this is my wife's. So don't tell Janelle. I'm using her diet cranberry uh, and a little fresh lime on there. A 
You know, people are going to complain that I stirred the drink with my finger. <laughs> uh, kind of thinking maybe I need to make this a tra tradition on the other show, on the Sporting Chef show, and um, drink vodka the whole time. Good idea, bad idea. All right, this is close. Let me show you my turkey. Make a little room here. This is cheese that's going to go into the cauliflower. Let me make a little room here. This is fresh thyme. Clean this mess up. I'm going to walk over here and then I'm going to walk right back here. So stay right here. Yep, this is my turkey. So imagine this summer you're going to some friends' houses, close friends, you've washed your hands, you've boiled your whatever it is you have to do and you bring you say i've got some pheasants i'm going to bring over i'm going to bring over some chicken or i'm going to bring over some quail you pack it tightly into a cooler uh, this turkey has been in here and this is not a good cooler um, i would generally use a uh, a better insulated cooler than this but there's steam steam coming out and this has been in here for roughly three hours so figure, I had the foil on there. This turkey is still screaming hot. What happens a lot of times when you go to pull it up by the legs, the legs come off in your hand because it's that tender. That is not something that I manufactured for t TV. It's crazy. That's the biggest problem with these turkeys is they're so, so very tender. Now, people don't believe that it'll stay warm this long in a, uh, in a cooler, but it is hot and it is moist. And tell you, when you go to carve a turkey, rather than slicing it that way on the turkey itself, you want to take both breast fillets off. So again, this was brined, then it was packed into the cooler, and that it's still, it's still really, really hot. All right, I'm gonna put this on a platter. Okay, so in that blink of an eye, I've got the turkey cut up over here. I didn't think about gravy. I should have thought about gravy, my bad. So make gravy with yours. This is my quail surprise, I've got a little my green bean casserole, there's some um, goat cheese, just because we're kind of getting down to it on the cheese. Over here, this is, let me show you, this is the cauliflower puree. After you boil it, you want to drain it really, really, really good. The problem, if you've ever made a cauliflower puree or a cauliflower anything and it's too watery, you didn't drain it enough. You got to drain it, drain it, drain it, drain it, drain it. Then I'm gonna, I've got a little butter in there. This is um, whatever cheese I happen to find. I've got some Parmesan. There's some cheddar in there. And there's even a little cheese curd left over that I didn't know it was there. Michelle, I'm sorry. Had I known that the cheese curds were still there, I would have eaten them a long time ago because anybody in Wisconsin or Minnesota knows that you got to eat your cheese curds when they're fresh, right? All right, a little salt and pepper in here. This is togadashi pepper. Just think of it as regular old pepper. This is the fresh thyme from the garden. Now, you know, this being our last date night, um, you know, we're just like being at home, my, you know, I'm used to being gone a lot. And so um, my wife and I are seeing a lot more of each other than we usually do in our I think the secret to our 35-year marital success is uh, the fact that how can you miss me if I don't go away? There's some jalapeno because I like it. If you don't like jalapeno, if you don't like it spicy, then don't add the jalapeno. So if you want, you can boil this and make it super, super smooth. I like mine a little chunky and a little cheesy. And this is one of those things you can make well in advance and then just keep it warm. Uh, 
right. There's my cauliflower puree. This is usually the first thing that people go for, and I'm telling you, if you don't tell anybody that that's cauliflower, you tell it, they think it's mashed potatoes, especially when you put that cheese. You could put a little cream in there if you'd like. Um, all I had on, I had a little Mexican cream on hand, a little crema, but I thought I'd hang on to it. All right. Thanksgiving in May is our final date night. For those of you who watch Sporting Chef on, and Dead Meat on a regular basis, thanks very much. We really appreciate the fact that you take the time to watch the show. If you want to watch Sportsman Channel, Outdoor Channel, World Fishing Network, and more anytime, go to My Outdoor TV, MOTV.com. Um, you can get it on Amazon Prime, Hulu, any of the normal places, you can get it there. Um, if, if you don't get Sportsman Channel or Outdoor Channel, there's really no excuse why you shouldn't if you have an internet connection. Go to My Outdoor TV, use the promo code SPORTINGCHEF. That'll get you 30 day free trial to see whether you like it or not. And I don't know why you wouldn't like it. Let's hope we can get back to normal as soon as humanly possible. I am Scott Laysath. On behalf of Sportsman Channel, The Sporting Chef and the Dead Meat TV shows, Looking forward to seeing you all out there, and I'm gonna give you a big hearty handshake and a hug. I might even lick your face.